Welcome to Sigma TV and a new episode from the executive interview series. Everybody loves a good success story, and today we're bringing you a textbook case. Boris Chaikin, CEO of Soft2Bet. Yeah, that's right, that Soft2Bet that has been, you know, making waves in the past five or so years. So Boris, first of all, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for the invitation, Ramona, and for the opportunity to Sigma TV. So I know that our followers are keen to know to learn more about your insights, so I'll kick right in. Okay. Uh, soft to bet uh, started off on a meteoric rise, you can say, and then COVID happened. So what was the impact? Well, COVID actually propelled us even more meteoric. Uh, it's probably because of the, you know, the mix of the business that we have, which uh, so far has been uh, more into the casino space right. uh, rather than, uh, than sports books. So, you know, uh, other rival companies, which are uh, more sportsbook focused, they suffered a bit more in the first months of COVID. Yeah. Although things even on the sportsbook side have now uh, resurrected they from the assets. Kind of, yes, 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 they have kind of leveled out. So, uh, but you know, COVID left people uh, at home without other forms of entertainment, and you know, we see the business. Uh, we are in mo mostly as entertainment uh, yes. above anything else. Of uh, so, you know, people just um, started using our brands and, uh, and our services a bit more. Diversify from B2C to B2B in a relatively short span of time. How important do you believe this diversification strategy is for Soft2Bet? Well, the strategy comes from our philosophy and understanding that, you know, practically speaking, we, cannot, we should not keep all of our eggs in one basket. So, you know, that coupled with my uh, personal background in, in, in B2B, the previous uh, 10 years before Soft2Bet, um, so it was a logical step and logical expansion for the company. It gives us access to new markets uh, where we have not had an opportunity to, you know, to step in so, uh, so well so far. So it gives us access to more marketing, uh, working with partners, working with different teams and people. So it's, as I said, it's a logical expansion of our, of our business efforts. And you know, it, it, it brings well to the bottom line as well. In fact, you are also offering white label solutions now, so which uh, kind of makes a bit of a leap from having full control of uh, your own brands, like say Wazamba, and now suddenly making a package available to third parties. How uh, how does that feel? Well, our B two B and white label offering is a little bit different than the audience have seen so far, because mm -hmm. uh, I mean. We are more treating and, and working with our partners exactly as, as the world says it, partners. Okay, so we still keep a very solid vested interest in each of these brands. We're not letting it completely go unless uh, the you know the clients require us to in the hands of the of the partner. We are very hands on with the uh, with the daily operations. We treat them as our own brands. You know, within the team, yeah. actually, you know, I, I like to say, which is a fact of life, that you know sometimes even our customer service guys or our employees they. They're not really aware and they're not making a difference like this is a b2c mm -hmm. and this is a b2b brand so you know all of them are treated exactly the same way which i believe is a, a key component to to our success in, in b2b offering so the approach is still very much hands-on the approach is exactly the same as as if it's our own b2c yes do you worry that maybe your white label offering could uh, cannibalize your own brands maybe like um, compete against well, each there's other. Always, there's always a, uh, an element of risk there, but if you look at it from another, from another angle, you know, there's, um, there's so much competition out there, which is good because, you know, in, in, in competition we thrive. So uh, on the long term, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not worried. As, as I said, you know, we're, we're carefully selecting our B2B partners uh, to be people in companies that can offer us uh, an opportunity to, uh, to enter into new markets uh, or, uh, you know, get us new marketing channels and new, uh, new audiences and, uh, so, so it's actually, you know, uh, it's a calculated, uh, it, it's a calculated step. Projection. Yes, exactly. Yep. Correct. Mm -hmm. So back to expansion, I believe you've also opened offices in Limassol and Lisbon. Correct. What can you tell us about those? Well, the office in Limassol is actually now the headquarter of the company where we have moved and shifted, uh, a large part of the operation and the, uh, and the IT development teams. So this is now the, the, you know, the heart of the company. Uh, the offices in Lisbon is a strategic step towards the uh, Latin American markets. Mm -hmm. We started with, uh, we made our inroads already with a couple of brands into Brazil and with some, uh, you know, pretty nice uh, local sponsorships of, uh, of, the, of uh, a local football championship. So from there on, we're, we're starting to test the waters in, uh, in different Spanish-speaking Latin American countries. And Lisbon is a, is a nice location for that. 
Well, I was about to ask whether you plan on expanding the global footprint beyond Europe, but you've clearly... Well, of course, yeah, yes, yes, yes. You've just answered, you have yes, plans. Yes, we, we are eyeing, we are eyeing uh, Latin America. We're also looking into Asia. Uh, we've made our own first baby steps into uh, into Japan and, uh, you know, looking at other countries as well. So, yeah, the sky's the limit. So it's all happening. Yeah, yeah, it is happening, <laughs> yes. Um, native apps, let's talk about those. Okay. You uh, launched one on the Swedish market. Correct. Um, what made you pick this market? Well, Sweden is a, Sweden is a strategic market for us because it's our first big license where we are licensing, yes, uh, licensed uh, territory where we operate. Yes. The market has huge potential, even uh, even though of, an, of all the COVID restrictions that were implemented by the local regulator. Um, so. It, it, as I said, it's always it been it's always been a good market, ground, so maybe. it's a good testing yeah. ground. We uh, we believe that you know it's a it's a very highly technological market, so the the audience requires uh, native apps native and apps. you know. Yes. So uh, yeah, how they, how has the market responded? Has it uh, matched your expectations? Well, so far yes. We we only launched the app uh, last month, and uh, so far it ho it only has been on uh, on iOS, and we we now. Uh, listing it on uh, on the Google App Store as well. Okay. Um, so yes, so far so far it's performing quite well. Yeah, people are shifting from the uh, from the usual website to the to the app. Would you see the company launching other native apps on other markets? Maybe. Definitely, definitely. We uh, we launched one app in uh, in Sweden. That's for uh, YoYo Casino brand. We are thinking about uh, doing the same for the sportsbook brand Campobet. Right. Okay. And from there on, we'll we'll take this approach to uh, to other markets, especially in Western Europe, because you know, as I said, uh, you know, the, the, these these markets are a bit more technologically advanced, yes. and they require. And people love being able to you apps. know do your, do their thing on the go, really. Correct. So Correct. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, very true. Um, back to the Malta office. Do you have any plans in the pipeline? What can you tell us? Well, Malta office is expanding rapidly. I mean, last time I was here, I was, can see uh, that. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> Last time I was here, there was like uh, you know a handful of people uh, doing a renovation of this uh, of this space that we're in now. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, it's already full, and uh, we have just uh, you know rented uh, another floor in the building. Mm -hmm. So we're expanding. I mean, Malta. We've always seen Malta as a natural uh, place to do gambling business in uh, in Europe. Although it's not the only one, and uh, you know we have offices in other countries, as you yeah. mentioned, in Cyprus. But and, maybe uh, you see the Malta. But we see Malta as a, as a main as a main hub because mm -hmm. you know still a lot of the business is still is taking place here uh, with providers with affiliates. So yeah. it's a it's a very easy and natural place to to conduct the business. Makes a lot of sense. So thank you so much for sharing all these insights with us, and thank you for it's following Sigma TV. Mm -hmm.